To come to Hawaii as a tourist, by which I mean coming here mainly for pleasure, is to prop up the capitalist colonial system that continues to despoil and exploit the islands and their people. Like Mexico and the Caribbean, Hawaii is viewed as a place of rest for the privileged. This is a deeply colonial, racist narrative we should be unlearning. After learning from native Hawaiians, learning about the history of Hawaii prior to American occupation, I believe there are few, if any, ethical ways to visit Hawaii at present. Boycotting tourism in Hawaii is a way of supporting native Hawaiians and other residents in working towards decolonization and Hawaiian sovereignty. Donating to native Hawaiian activists is another means of support. Consider transportation. If you come to Oahu, you'll be flying into a car-centric airport that doesn't even bother to sell transit fare. Public transit isn't available everywhere, typically takes two to four times longer than driving, and regularly gets stuck in the horrible traffic here. As for bicycles, cycling infrastructure is rare, and good cycling infrastructure is almost non-existent. So both locals and tourists are practically forced to drive, which contributes to the destruction of the local ecosystem and our planet along with impoverishing working-class locals due to the incredibly high cost of car ownership. And, of course, flying here, as anywhere, is unsustainable. Hawaii has extremely limited natural resources such as fresh water, which the U.S. Navy recently contaminated by spilling jet fuel into the largest aquifer on Oahu, poisoning the water system for nearly 100,000 people on Navy water lines. As for food, Hawaii imports 85 to 90 percent of its food at great financial and environmental cost. As a tourist, you will be drawing on these and other resources unsustainably and contributing to the exceptionally expensive cost of living in Hawaii. Even more so when you use the tourist and hotel industries here, most of which exist to extract value from the islands and exploit workers to concentrate wealth in the hands of their executives. Hawaii simply does not have the resources to support the current amount of tourism. The reason the U.S. brings tourists here is for profit. Hawaii was in every way a more equitable socialist place before American occupation. It had the world's first universal health care system, was the fifth nation to have mandatory public education, maintained an exceptionally high literacy rate, and served as a refuge for black and Asian folks since before the Civil War when these groups were being oppressed and exploited in the U.S. Iolani Palace had electric lights before the American White House. The U.S. systematically rolled back much of this progress, deindustrializing Hawaii, violently banning Hawaiian language in the school system, and denying previously free health care to Hawaiians unless they could pay. The U.S. military repeatedly bombed Kaho Olawe for over 30 years merely to test weapons. 500 tons of TNT were detonated on the island to simulate an atomic blast in 1965, permanently damaging the island's ecology and water table. In short, the U.S. committed genocide against native Hawaiians, which is still ongoing as native Hawaiians are disproportionately incarcerated, homeless or in poverty, and subjected to poor health outcomes. Like indigenous peoples all over the world, native Hawaiians have intergenerational trauma from the failed attempt to eradicate their people and culture. Moreover, many native Hawaiians and other residents don't want tourists to come here. The reason should be obvious at this point. Blithely supporting the tourism industry and other capitalistic elements in Hawaii is another barrier to their liberation. Tourism by rich foreigners is part of what keeps native Hawaiians under the boot of their American oppressors. Colonization is ongoing everywhere, but to come to Hawaii as a tourist is to participate in an active, early phase of colonization, a land theft so recent that my dad was born here before it was a state. Just as living car-free is a boycott of the auto industry, just as veganism is a boycott of animal exploitation, refusing to come to Hawaii is a boycott of colonial oppression. These movements are about harm reduction, not perfection, not moral purity. Although there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, although we can't help that we are settlers born on stolen land, we can choose where we travel, and we can choose how to behave while abroad. Harm reduction is always available to us. The earth does not exist for us to trample with our cars and use as we please. Hawaii's water is not ours to take. Hawaii does not exist for our entertainment. Which is why, barring some family emergency, I won't be going to Hawaii again while it remains under American control. Moral issues aside, I find it deeply depressing to be in Hawaii at this point. I love my family and the land, but I'm disgusted by what the U.S. has done to this place. If you decide to cross the picket line and go anyway, I'd suggest thinking extra carefully about your resource usage, transportation, and where your money goes while you're in Hawaii. Consider donating to Native Hawaiian organizations on the front lines, like Hawaiian People's Fund, Sierra Club of Hawaii, and Oahu Water Protectors. Consider yourself an uninvited guest, 
and treat the land with respect. Never forget you are on stolen land, nor that it is the colonizer who has invited you there, not indigenous folks. To my family in Hawaii, I love you folks, and I make this decision with a heavy heart. This is my way of caring for your home, for our family's ancestral home since we came over from China. I know Winnipeg isn't exactly a travel destination, but I'd be happy to host you here on Treaty 1 territory, and I'd invite you to show respect to these native lands too.